Good evening, Codger. Old London Larry here. Tonight, on this stormy night, and it really is storming. Our storm and rain we've had in this part of Georgia in months. And we're thankful for the rain. Tonight, I'm going to tell you a, a true ghost story. It happened to me and my family. Whether you believe it or not, that's okay. Because I didn't believe in spirits or ghosts either until this time in our life. I'm going to start the story off back in 1964 when the house that I grew up in, we had a boarder that lived there. His name was Uncle Mose. Me and a friend of mine came home from school. He was an old fellow. Uncle Mose was. He was an old fella. Probably in his 80s. Early 80s. We came home from school one afternoon. And mind you, I was 10 years old. And we knocked on his door and nobody come to the door of his little apartment in our house. So kind of worrying about him, we opened the door, he was laying dead in the floor. You know, somebody that's 10 years old, that's pretty traumatic, I guess. Anyway, moving ahead about 32, 33 years. My dad had already passed away at the time. My mama was living with us. We moved into the house, back into the house that I was raised in, to help take care of her. We eventually had to end up putting her in a nursing home. As heartbreaking as that was, Strange things started happening in the house. And at this time, my ex-wife and me and my son and my daughter were living there. It started off with such things as uh, the toilet flushing by itself. Which we thought nothing of. We thought it might be something wrong with it, but I had it checked out, or I checked it out. The uh, sink in that same bathroom started coming on by itself. These things happened over and over and over at all certain times of the day and night. I can remember laying in the bed and hearing the toilet flush and getting up and going there and there'd be nobody there. Excuse me, had to get my tamper. Well, one night we was all sitting in the living room and we heard this awful, awful crash coming from the kitchen. And it sounded like every plate, every dish in the house had fallen out on the floor and broken. All four of us jumped up and ran in there, flung the door open. 
and nothing had been touched. Nothing. The TV got to where it would come on and off, on its own. The channels would change, and we didn't have a remote. This here changed by turning. One night, my ex-wife and I were sitting there watching television, and we had these white sheer curtains in the living room, and just out of nowhere, they blew straight up, straight out into the room. There was no wind, the windows were closed. We tried and tried to figure out what it could be, but we never did. I had put two rooms upstairs in the house, which was just an attic originally. And we would hear footsteps of a grown man walking up and down the stairs all through the night, but never when we were sitting in the living room. It was either in the bedroom, the dining room, or in the kitchen. And our kids were too small to make steps like this. My daughter was so small, she practically had to climb up the steps. The man that, that we found dead built this house in the 20s, I guess, I don't know for sure. I took a light cover off one time and it had a date on it of 1921. Of course, the house could have been built before lights, I don't know. It was an old farmhouse. He owned all the land around. He and his brother, his brother lived next door. Never knew him, he had died before I came along. As long as we stayed in that house from when that started happening till we finally moved out in 2000, we constantly had things going on. My children had stories of things that they had heard. My wife, she had, she had different stories too other than the ones I've told you. care what anybody thinks of me or anybody says, I believe that the house was haunted by Uncle Mose. If not him, it was my dad, but I believe it was Uncle Mose. And as old as the house was, Uncle Mose and his wife my mom and dad, and me and my family, and two other people at one time, which were Uncle Moses' uh, niece and nephew, are the only people that ever lived in the house. So it didn't have a long history of, of people living in it. Well, I just wanted to share that with you. Until this day, We'll never know what it is, what it was, I suppose, other than a ghost. But my daughter and I went back about 10 years later, and there's a family living there. They had a yard sale. And when we walked up and introduced ourselves and told them that we used to live there, the first thing that came out of their mouth was, is this house haunted? <laughs> yeah, buddy. They said that they, their son had seen a man with a cowboy hat on and boots, which there were no cowboy hats and you know, boots or anything like that that lived there that I know of. Bunk Mose did wear boots, no hobnail boots, and he did have a fedora that he wore all the time. And I kind of told him what, what he might have looked like, and they said, yeah, they believed that's who they'd seen. So I guess 
the house is still haunted to this day. I'd like to go back and spend a night or two in it, but we never were afraid at any given time. We're never in danger, but I do believe the house was haunted. I'm smoking my Savinelli Trevi tonight with some guess what? Some haunted bookshop. Yeah, buddy. That's some good stuff. I hope you enjoyed my Halloween ghost story. And until next time.